Well, now that you've heard from Rex and his super serious topic, we're going to talk about Sufi now. Oh, and by the way, my name is Alicia Flores. I'm a second year here at Long Star College Kingwood, and I'm from Long College. So, when I went to the Space Center earlier this year, and I went to the gift shop, I noticed that there was a Snoopy plush, an overpriced hoodie, <laughs> and a really ugly shirt. <laughs> However, when I stepped out of the gift shop, I noticed there was no Snoopy exhibit. And this struck me because Laika, who is a Soviet dog, is in the gift shop and has an exhibit or is part of an exhibit. So this led me to ask myself, why did NASA choose Snoopy as their safety mascot, or why does NASA associate with Snoopy? And this is a question that apparently not everyone has, and not everyone has studied. So for my study, I only I reference these two books. I reference Peanuts and American Culture by W. White Peter, which he argues that despite Scholes saying that his comic was not of great importance, Peanuts is actually very important because it gives us a look into various cultural or historic moments such as the Cold War, the space race, and the Vietnam War. The second book that I referenced is Charlie Brown's America by Blake Scott Ball, in which he states that despite people arguing that Peanuts is a, little, a silly little comic that has no affiliation with politics whatsoever, it's actually full of politics, or it's very politicized. And so before I can answer my question, we have to take into consideration the historical or the moment that Peanuts was put out into the world, which was around the 1950s. And around this time, we were experiencing the Cold War. And with the Cold War, we also experienced the second Red Scare which was primarily brought on to us by Joseph McCarthy, a senator in Wisconsin, and his purge for communist infiltration in the government. And Joseph McCarthy's fear-mongering and ideas, or anti-communist ideas, influenced Dr. Frederick Wortham, who published a book titled Seduction of the Innocent, in which he claims that comics are the reason that we have ju juvenile delinquency and he even went as far as to claim that cause, comics cause asthma. Yeah. <laughs> and so due to this political culture that was brewing at the time and due to you know, this type of media that was being published, comics began, be, began to censor themselves because artists want, they wanted a job. They wanted to be paid. So they censored themselves so their work could be published and so that they could make money. And so at the time, comics like this were popular. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time that Peanuts was first published, there was a spectrum of the different types of comics that were being published, as I mentioned before. There was, on one end, you have things like Captain America, commie smasher, full of action and full of very detailed drawings and color and like extensive comic books. And then you have Peanuts, which is very, very simple line drawings. You can barely tell where the, where the sky starts and where it ends, where the, the ground is, you know, very simple characters. And it often parodied or made fun of these situations or these historical moments that we were experiencing, or they reflected the true feelings of the American people at the time rather than filling them with more fear. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have things like Dennis the Menace, childish little comics that are meant to help you escape from all the trouble that is taking place in America at the time. However, despite Charles Schulz making or parodying a lot of historical moments in our history, and you know, making fun of serious topics. The one topic that he felt that he could not make fun of or joke about was space. Charles Schulz actually had a soft spot for space, 
And this was because he felt it didn't sustain the same humor because people's lives were at risk. And he, he also showed that same enthusiasm that, or enthusiasm that the American public showed that we can do attitude that got us to the moon. Around the time that, or further, further on after the first Peanuts comic was published, NASA has Apollo 1, which ends in a tragedy. The space capsule is, or catches on fire, and it ends in the death of three astronauts. As you can see here, here are the damages, it's bad. And failure was not, or failure is not an option for NASA. So, because of this, they needed to clean up their image and they needed to remind the people that they can do these things. They can get us to the moon by the end of the decade like John F. Kennedy wanted us to, right? And so, to gain the public's trust again and to gain the government's trust again, because without public trust, without government trust, NASA has no money. <laughs> So the first thing that they did was conduct a review board in which they find out what went wrong and they give a detailed explanation of what went wrong, which was the fire and the astronauts not being able to get out because the latch was on the outside of the space capsule. And so they publish their review board. They install new technology where the latch is on the inside so people are able to escape in case a fire breaks out again. And most importantly, they get a new mascot. Why did they get a new mascot? Well, Albert M. Chop, a public relations officer for NASA, believed that because their image had been tarnished due to this fire, due to this tragedy, they needed someone like, in his words, Smokey the Bear. <laughs> and to Chop, Snoopy was the perfect decision. Snoopy was the perfect choice for the mascot because as you saw in previous slides, Snoopy had flight experience. He'd already been to the moon. And he wasn't the only one that believed this. When he pitched the idea to the rest of the NASA team, they loved this idea because at, the, at this point, in like the, this is the 60s, 67 I believe, Snoopy was already a household name. He had made a name for himself because he'd become beloved by everyone due to reflecting everyone's true emotions rather than filling them with more fear or simply being an escape from what was happening. And so when, they, when Chop called up Scholes, Charles Scholes, the artist for Peanuts, he did not hesitate to begin drawing and coming up with these, all these cool safety posters for the, next, the following Apollo missions. And Charles Schulz actually did this with no financial compensation. He did this because, as I mentioned before, he had a soft spot for space and he believed space was something that we should pursue. He, was, he had that can-do attitude that most Americans had. And so for Apollo 10, Snoopy was once again incorporated and he was actually sent to the moon again. In a, or in this, this lunar module was actually named Snoopy because he was go, or it was going to snoop around the moon and figure out where Apollo 11 would be landing once we got to the moon. So Snoopy got to snoop around the moon again. Further on, besides being used by NASA for safety training and for safety posters and for the Silver Snoopy Award, which is awarded to its employees who follow the safety protocol the best, Snoopy was used by NASA to promote STEM education. For example, here we have a book that was published in 1972, which was a collaboration between Peanuts, Charles Schulz, and NASA. The first half of the book is primarily like earth science type of things. And then the later half of the book is more space themed and actually has photos provided by NASA and information directly from NASA. And NASA is credited at the beginning of the book. In 2019, uh, 
Peanuts collaborated once, or Charles Schulz collaborated with NASA once again with a Snoopy in Space TV show on Apple TV. And along with this TV show, a curriculum was provided to teachers across the country in which they would be able to provide STEM education, space education for students to get them excited about space. And recently in Kennedy, at Kennedy Space Center, a show was produced to again get students excited about space. Most recently, Snoopy got to Snoop in space again. He went, or in the most recent Artemis mission, which was conducted or set up last fall, Snoopy got to go in zero G. And so I'd like to end my presentation by saying that if, if Snoopy is, is set up in space again, once again, years later by NASA, then NASA should open up an exhibit, dedicate an exhibit to their history with Snoopy because I feel like it really displays that, that intersection between cultural, cultural things such as media, you know, comics, books, and NASA, and I feel like it should be displayed more. Here are my works cited, and thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content from LSC Kingwood.